I'm back from Sweden with tons of footage. We got a lot done. This video is going to be about how the beds were built. Subscribe to my channel, press the little bell icon. So yeah, let's see how we got on. So for those of you that don't know, I dismantled all these old cow beds, which uh, left me with a whole load of really amazing timber, all painted green with no lead paint. And I brought with me a load of these old spindles from the twins playpen, which used to be like a Berlin wall running through our apartment until they made a break for it. So I did some kind of rough calculations, sketching away my little book measuring some stuff. Decided that I didn't have enough light in my uh, workshop, so I installed another light above my work table, which made a massive difference and made sure that the videos would look nice and clear. Hammering away. It was literally like minus 13 in there. That workshop has these very thick uh, flint walls, which kept it like a freezer in there. My fingers were totally frostbitten. Yeah, it made the whole thing very, very slow. There you go, lots of light. Right, so, yeah, I had these long side pieces and I needed some uprights for the ends. So I dismantled this old gate. Well, I tried to dismantle this old gate, but I couldn't get the end pieces off. So in the end, I just chopped them off with my new jigsaw, which just munched through them very easily. And then I ripped down the middle of each with my uh, track saw to make some nice end posts for the beds. Chopped them to length on my uh, miter saw. And there you go. So then I had three sets of end posts. Still frozen outside. Man, it was so cold. So then I measured up for the, uh, for the headboard posts. Uh, you can see there that I uh, was experimenting with how high to make the beds and how much of the mattress should stick out of the top. A bit of trial and error. So these were all the posts for the headboard posts, which I denailed and uh, that was where a mouse ate a bit of my hammer while I was away. Thank you. So I chopped those all down to length. So then I had headboard posts and footboard posts for the beds. A bit more calculations. There you go. There's a drawing of something. Not sure what that was. Not Um, I think now I'm cutting the head and footboard ends. Aiden's taking us outside to show how bloody cold it was. Yes, there it is. Okay, started sanding it down. Not too much. I wanted to leave as much of the kind of uh, cow crud as I could on there. But yeah, on the backs was a little too much cow crud, so I, I planed that off with my ancient electric plane, which exploded at some point, and so I had to buy a new one. But anyway, never mind. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing a nice little beveled edge, nice and smooth, so when you're getting in and out, you don't snag your drawers on it. Then I started working out how much of these spindles I could use for each bed, because I had a limited number. I only just had enough, really. And how far the spacing between them could be, like all that kind of stuff. There's a little sketch. Look at that. Very technical. 
I made a little stop on my saw, as you can see there, so that I could just cut lots of them the same length very easily. There you go. This was the first bed I made, by the way, and it took me like five times longer than the others because I made loads of mistakes. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought I'd show you this one just because maybe it's a bit more juicy, but the others were probably a bit more boring, but they were a lot easier. So it did get easier as I was going along. I've been told that before. When you build something, you should always make an extra one first to make all the mistakes. And then it'll be a lot easier when you make the proper one that you want to keep and you want it to be really perfect. I think that's a good tip. I think my friend Marcus told me that anyway. So my first idea of how to center these uh, spindle holes was to make a little kind of template thing, but that just got really long and slow. And then I didn't remember to do like a depth thing. That's what that bit of blue tape was. So they're all the same length, but I did remember after four. Anyway, there you go. Drilled all the holes. Drilling, 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 drilling. Lots of drilling. Lots of sawdust. Very cold hands inside my little orange gloves. They were like little miniature freezers, those gloves. A nice little rub down with some sandpaper. A test fit to see if it was going to work. Yeah, there you go. So then I had to fix on the posts to the front and the back. So I was going to use dowels. You'll see. I was going to use dowels, but I needed to drill a vertical hole into my template that I made. You'll see in a minute. And then I figured I could use a bit of these old uh, cow bumper things to uh, make a kind of... You'll see what I do in a minute. It'll all become clear. Keep watching and you'll find out what happens. That's what I'm supposed to say. There you go. So there's a piece of the cow bumper and I can use that to make a pretty perfect vertical hole in the template, which I was going to use to make the dowel holes so that they would perfectly line up. And it did work very well, even though I kind of screwed it up. You can see the other one there on the left. That was my first attempt, which I completely screwed up. Anyway, I got there in the end. Then I clamped it on in position and I was able to drill very nice vertical holes to the correct depth using that little bit of blue tape that's on my drill bit. Very nice. So two for the top, three for the bottom. And then figuring out, you can see by the way, at this point I've resorted to wearing ski gloves because it was so bloody cold. But yeah, I screw that template onto the end using one of those old Danish coins as a washer. And then do the same thing. So all of those holes should really line up pretty perfectly now. Oh, and they did. I mean, there's no big suspense here. Like, it did work out. That was the least of my problems. More drilling. Some nice autofocus work there by the camera. Yeah. Dreamy. Ski gloves. There we go. Take that off. Ski gloves. little lens flare b-roll there okay as like I said the first bed I made was a bit of a nightmare lots of things went wrong one of which being one of bit one of which being that uh, my wood glue froze <laughs> into a solid block of uh, weird like sticky ice and um, it just didn't really work very well so I had to try and thaw it out but I was too impatient and so I just started using it while it was still frozen and it just made a bit of a mess but uh, yeah we got there in the end anyway here I am 
gluing in the dowels, constructing these headboards and footboards. Are they called footboards? Tailboards? Toe boards? I don't know what they're called, but the bottom bit of the bed, the end bit of the bed. Hammering them in. There we go. God, my hair is looking like such a mess. It looks a little bit like the uh, rat infested insulation that we found in the gatehouse. You'll have to tune into the gatehouse video for that one. just started recording some piano so you might hear a little bit of piano in the background but I'm sure that'll be all right so there you go that was uh, that was a bit of a mission I didn't show all of my nightmare on film because it would be uh, too depressing but yeah this was me having succeeded building the uh, the first ends of the bed so then I found these nifty bracket things online, uh, which I used, which were actually pretty easy and worked really good. Just screwed those in. Yeah, so they just basically slot in like that, held in by gravity, and then you can kind of tighten them even more afterwards and it just pulls them super tight so it's a, it's a pretty good system I was very scared that the mattresses would be too big so I literally measured about 10 times everything you can never measure enough in that kind of situation I would say and here we go the other side goes in tapping Tapping with my old mallet. There we go. Loosening them off so it can slide in and then I tighten them up again. See? Look at that. Nice and tight. Or toit, as they say in South Africa. That's it. We almost have a bed. It's got no base but it has sides, so you can see what it's going to be like now. I just checked it and thank God it was the right width, like two millimeters too small, but I think we can get away with that just by squashing the mattress. Adding the rest of the screws. Oh, this music that Tim's playing is suits the video quite nicely. I doubt you can hear it, but it's quite nice. Some more cinematic screw shots there from Aiden. So then back out into the Arctic wilderness to make the uh, base boards bit of the bed, the bit that the mattress sits on. I'd had these pieces uh, which I bought at Christmas waiting in the gatehouse. I went out to get them and uh, yeah, cut them down to length. Screwed them in. So then I've got a bit of the old dairy vacuum system, metal bar, took all of the fittings off so that I could make a kind of reinforcement bar down the centre of the bed. Uh, yeah. Just in case there's uh, a little too much action on any of those beds at any time, we don't want them to collapse. So yeah, this is pretty strong, this metal bar. And look who's back. It's the reciprocating saw also known as a tiger saw in Sweden, I think. But 
yeah, it's my new favourite tool. Safety glasses on. I don't want metal splinters in my eyes. Look at that guy. It just chews through. So beautiful. What a great tool. Then I cut some little bracket things to hold the bar in place. You'll see in a minute. It'll all make sense. Don't hang up. Keep watching. Don't hang up. Keep watching. There you go. Look. Beautiful. Beautiful. Back through the ice, trudging through the snow, up into the bedroom in the sad little house. Screw those in. Feeling pretty good. And then just screw in all the slats, basically. The first bed I was very neat and I measured them all. The second two I just eyeballed it because I realised, you know, better if it's a little bit kind of imprecise somehow. It's got a bit more character underneath the mattress. And then finally we were able to load on the beautiful coconut and latex mattresses that I ordered from Futon Werkstatt in Berlin, which are just amazing. And I realised ever since I got back to Berlin I've been sleeping really badly because my bed is so hard and these beds are just amazing so when you come and stay you'll be sleeping on these and you will get a great night's sleep I can guarantee you that. So then I just repeated the process twice but way quicker the other times like I said so much better quite easy actually like it really was just all good. So there you go, that was me making the beds with a little bit of help from Aiden. Um, they're all done, they're very comfortable, they're brilliant. Please subscribe to the channel and um, plenty more videos coming up. So stay tuned, hit the bell icon, uh, check out my Patreon. Um, yeah, look at some other videos on here. Anyway, lots of love to you and I will see you next time. Take care.